In our last video, we created a MERN stack application that here was our compose that we ended up with um, Mongo database, a front end in React, and a back end. Um, and let's just make sure that still works as expected. Let's start it up, and I forget what port it is. Um, so what we're going to look at is bringing in Docker Compose Watch. So let's look this up. This is just released recently. Um, and essentially, so if I make a change, so let's say we have this running. We can see this here. Hello world. Um, and let's take this guy here and change that from exclamation point to a period. You'll see it hasn't changed. And so I have to close it. I actually need to switch it to build even. You see how long this kind of takes. And finally it's back up. And now it's changed. And so with watch, what we can do is we can specify in this compose YAML file when to like when a change is detected, what to do. Um, and so I think they give an example in here, which hopefully makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. Um, so it all falls underneath this develop. Let's build. And we'll put it inside here. And so uh, there might be more actions, but these are the two that I know of. Uh, sync and rebuild. So sync will detect any changes made in a specific file path. So here we'll specify this as fe source. And so that's going to be here and here. So anytime we make a change here, it's going to sync those changes to the target, which in our case is actually going to be, oh, interesting. This just get, got a little bit more complicated. Um, and it got complicated because we're using Nginx. Hmm. So because of that, I think we can still do this. It'll just work a little bit differently. Um, because we use Nginx, we're not actually running a development build. And so instead of syncing, for now, we'll actually need to do a rebuild um, because we're gonna need to trigger this entire Docker file to come through and make sure that this build gets run again. Um, otherwise, we would sync the files, sure, but it still needs to be built. Um, I think for our current needs, this will be fast enough, so we'll start with just that. Um, but ultimately, our files get copied here. And so on any change of these files, it's going to get, oh, interesting, actually. If we do a full rebuild, we don't even need this. So how about that? That just makes it even easier. Um, and then we do the same thing with the package.json. There are no modules here, so we don't need this one actually. And I think if, I'm wondering whether we just set the path to the entire folder or not. It's almost easier. So let's leave that. And we'll try this. So let's stop that all, rebuild it, and then does anything new show up to show? Oh, you know what? Sorry, that was wrong. Um, so what you would have had to do is a compose build first and then a docker compose watch. And now you can see it specifies what it's watching, which is this entire folder. And so now if I switch that back to an exclamation mark and save, we can see that if I can get it to show correctly, it detected this file changed and then it started this guy and then it rebooted everything which is a little bit overkill um, but let's just show that it worked so we have that 
Um, so that's the most rudimentary version of that. Let me see how bad it is before I decide whether running, running. And what that should hopefully mean is it didn't actually have to do anything with them, which seems correct. So it only rebuilt this front end one. And should I do it again? Save. I mean, that's honestly kind of quick enough that I wouldn't really bother to go much further than that. Um, if we were to say, make a change here, um, let's say we actually, let's do this on the command line itself. Um, boom, boom, no. Will this override it? We'll find out. No, of course not. Well, that's interesting. So that showed that it does change. Rebuilds, didn't find the correct stuff. And I can actually just bring it back now. That's easy and easier. So we install it. That's interesting. Oh, I'm in the wrong folder. Oh, yeah, yeah. all those, it detects it, automatically builds it, and then we're back up and running again. So, uh, let's leave it at that. That's kind of like a super quick introduction to Docker Compose Watch. Uh, actually, let's not leave it at that. Let's add it to our backend as well to show how that works. Um, and then that should be good enough. So, we have pretty much the same problem in the back end where, um, let's say, hmm, we'll just hard code this to 44. So now it, it is running, but you can see that it's still returning the old value. If we were to close this down and bring it back up again, it's still going to, actually, sorry, we've just built it, so it's obviously going to show that. Um, but again, I save this now and we're still stuck at 44, even though we changed it. And so what we're going to do is a similar thing that we did before. So we come here, we'll bring this guy over. Oops. And in this case, we can showcase the sink, I think. That rhymes. Uh, so here we will do a split one. So here we'll have two different watches where uh, we'll rebuild on the change to package.json. And that's just to cover if we add a new package, the Docker file needs to be fully redone so it can install those packages. But what we can do now is, so if we take a look at that, don't need to ignore that anymore. And then we specify the target to be uh, let's see what it's, so let's send to there, copy, copy, yeah, and the other thing we'll need to change is the run command. Uh, so by default, this will actually, let's just show that. So let's actually do, we'll build. So we start it and we can see that it's watching now, both of them. And we'll see that goes up. And then if we make that change again, and save, it detected it. And we are copying files to blah, blah, blah. Can't create directory app. Okay, so that's got fun stuff already. I think I put the path maybe wrong. So let's fix that. 
The thing that I've found interesting is watch doesn't have a build option. And so you have to do a build first and then a watch. Oops. And so now let's go back, switch that to what it was, save, still have a problem. Can't remove old file. Pretty sure this is the problem. And I don't have a better solution than just removing it right now. So if anyone who actually knows how to do this watches this and could put a comment, that'd be cool. Uh, but let's take that out, try this again. And I'm gonna be successful. Save that, there we go. So now I can show that syncing B being back in uh, after change were detected, but it's still showing this. And that's because the command that's running isn't listening for changes. Um, and so what I was hopeful would work is this. And the funny thing is, is it works once and unless something is changed today, it won't work after the first change. So we'll come in, we're back to 44 and then remove that. And you see it picked up the change. So this did exactly what we wanted, but now let's change this back. The changes got synced. Maybe this works, maybe it doesn't. Yeah, exactly. So the second change didn't get picked up correctly. And I'm pretty sure this has to be a bug in Compose Watch because, well, a mixture of Node and Compose Watch, because uh, clearly it picked up the change. And if we take a look inside Docker, uh, the sky, specifically the back end, and take a look at the files. So here, this is also kind of a useful view to see what's going on. And they like, they nicely show you that it's been modified. Uh, edit file. So here you can see that it has 55. And so what's happened is this node watch hasn't picked up the change, even though it does work. Um, will I be able to show this correctly? No, because it won't connect to the database. So I won't bother showing it locally, but this, this does work uh, locally, just not inside the container. Um, the best I've found to get around this for now is you can install node daemon, which is kind of the old way of doing this. Um, I don't love that considering node added that watch for a reason, but if I bring it in, um, switch this to node daemon, by default it watches, so you can just do this. Um, and that's also not going to work because uh, it doesn't know where to find it. So I think we should be able to do a node modules dot bin node daemon. Uh, yeah, let's see how we did. So now we're at 55. Come back, return that. It's changed and then Last time we swap it back to 44, this should now be 44. Um, so now with those changes, we successfully have both our front end and our back end automatically picking up changes. So you can just run your Docker Compose once and your changes are picked up. Um, particularly on the front end, there's a way that we can make it a little bit faster. But if you have a look at this, if I save this, by the time I get to the browser, I did the wrong refresh, but it was pretty much already there. So it, it could get better, but unless you have a problem and I currently don't with that, I'm just gonna leave it. Uh, so that's that. I'm gonna see if I can reach out to Docker about what we found on the uh, watch side of things with the node. Um, so that we don't need to do this portion of it um, and see what they have to say. Otherwise, uh, that kind of concludes this video and uh, thanks for watching.